We're in the mobile van and I want to talk all about essential oils with you guys. Whether you have pets or you bring your dog to the groomer, um, there's some things you need to be aware of. I really needed to talk more openly about essential oils and groomers and I find it's a tough crowd. So hopefully some groomers come on here with us. We had hundreds of people saying they wanted to. So we'll get this going in about two minutes. I think this looks okay. Do you guys think it looks okay as far as lighting goes? Um, can't really see too much. I mean, I got a table full of stuff. I was going to show you guys around the van, but I can kind of do that. Let's see. So there's my tub, right? There's my tub. And that's one thing as a groomer, you see that open container. You don't do that. Right? <laughs> so I, I kind of hosed the van down a little bit. So, you know, that's my shelves. And back when I first started, all that was loaded with product. It's not anymore. Pretty much any product up there right now is just to hold space so things don't fall. <laughs> so we'll take you the big tour. So there's the pump, right? And there's my shampoo and uh, my fan and my air conditioning. There's my conditioner I put in another container and we'll go back this way. There's a window. There's my door. There's the floor. And that pretty much is where all my grooming supplies are. I'd show you that, but it's not the cleanest. Um, up there, that's where I drive. This here is the other side. I can actually reach this. And that's the cab. That's where you drive. So my van has been off the road um, since 2014 when uh, Universe said, you're done. Okay, I agreed. So... As you guys can see, I don't have a lot of room in here. So when I first started, everything I did, there were so many options. I had so many options for shampoo and this and that, and I had so many things. It was nonsense, absolute nonsense. So let me first start. We'll officially start now, right? Whatever. So my name is Heather Henderson. I don't know where to look for the camera. I guess I'll be looking oddly this whole time because I got the camera sideways. So never mind that. Um, my name is Heather Henderson. I've been a dog groomer since 2002 and I went mobile. No, I'm sorry. I've been a dog groomer since 99 or 98. I honestly can't remember. Hey, Kim, um, you'll appreciate this. Look how tiny my grooming space is and it's so efficient because there's nothing extra. <laughs> One dog at a time, maybe two. Um, so I started back in 98 or 99. I went to school, the New York School of Dog Grooming. It was in the Little Red Schoolhouse upstairs um, in the middle of the summer. So it was hot as heck. I learned how to groom in very humid weather. And um, worst case scenario, your dog didn't dry and it went home, right? <laughs> You're claustrophobic. I don't have that problem. There's windows all around here. So for me, this works. So I'm going to try not to get sidetracked. Yeah, right. Okay, so I went mobile in 2002. Back in 2001, um, things were getting a little crazy at the place I was working at. It wasn't for me anymore. Um, it, it was nonsense. It was absolute nonsense. Um, saw this thing called mobile grooming. I was like, oh, that's, that's kind of cool, but I don't know if it's for me, but let me think about it. And then interest rates went to zero. And I said, well, how can I not do this? So I uh, bought the van and... Uh, Let's just say, for lack of a better term, shit hit the fan where I was at. And I walked out. So I knew this was for me. So I loved grooming. I loved mobile, especially. Um, the van was right here at my house. I took it on a row with me. I was traveling. Um, I would drive. I'd groom a dog, and I'd drive. I'd groom a dog, and I'd drive. Maybe groom two or three dogs, and then I'd drive. Efficiency out the roof. It was so easy to groom mobile because you're doing one dog completely through. One thing I didn't like about shop grooming was staging. You know, everybody comes in, everybody gets a bath, everybody goes in a cage, you work in sets. No, I work a dog through to through. It was all, this is all about um, stress-free grooming. And when I started, I had a lot of respiratory issues because I was in a very confined space. I mean, I have two windows and an air conditioning and a fan, but I, I was coughing a lot and I was using really expensive shampoo, 70 and $80 a gallon. And I'm not going to name names, but you guys can probably figure it out. But honestly, I'm so far removed from what's going on in the grooming world right now. I have no idea what's out there. So those really expensive 
shampoos, I had a few customers complain saying that they didn't like the way their dog smelled, um, their dog itched, and I took offense to that. I was like, I'm paying with $70 for a gallon of shampoo. How can it be bothering your dog? I didn't know better, right? I mean, I kind of knew a little bit about the whole chemical process with, um, you know, health and beauty aids for people. I got involved with um, holistic aspect of taking care of my animals probably about 20 years ago, if not 25 at this point, when I discovered how bad fabric softener and Febreze and all that was, you know, like I grew up with a German Shepherd and we used to take fabric softener sheets and rub it on her because she was so staticky. Now I know that's really bad, but I didn't know that back then. So when about 20 years ago, I realized that that fabric softener was a huge, huge problem in our house and actually causing some really bad, bad health concerns for my pug, Pugsley, I got rid of it. And I saw his health improve dramatically, really, really, really quickly, which was awesome because I would throw their beds in the dryer with fabric softener, they'd be sleeping on it. He'd had all kinds of breakouts on his stomach, our bed, everything. Everything was loaded with fabric softener. It's so bad for you guys. I need you to go to Google and look it up. Um, when you know better, you can do better. And if I can get every single person that's on here and watches it later to just ditch fabric softeners, I feel I've done a little part of my job. There's so many alternatives. Fabric softener is so bad for you. It's actually one of the worst things in your home, right? One of the worst along with, uh, floor cleaners and candles and stuff like that. Um, so 14 years of grooming, I loved it, but I started to see an opportunity. I started to see something that I was doing with Young Living Essential Oils was catching on. I wasn't looking for another business. I was only looking for products for my animals, but I slowly started integrating it into my dog grooming and um, I started bringing it into my dog grooming van and at first I was like, well, I'm not really sure what to do as far as a shampoo because you need one for a certain kind of coat, one for long, one for short, all this kind of stuff. And I, what was I going to do? They all had all this stuff in it that I really shouldn't be touching and was causing my hands. Guys, if you know groomers, you know groomers have horrible hands because they're in and out of water all day long and then they're blow drying and then, you know, they're using friction on their hands. Groomers hands, they take the abuse. So, and lungs, groomers' lungs are notoriously bad. So, I started to see a change. I started to see that there was something that I could do for myself and for the pets in my van, and I ditched all the shampoos that I bought. I had probably six different name brands I was using at the time, and I ditched them all for Dr. Bronner's. And I got the baby version and added my essential oils to it, and I was happy. It did so good. It took me a few weeks to get used to the no suds and having a ring around my tub, but it was okay. I figured it out. Um, once I started diving into Young Living, I started using the Young Living shampoo, which let me tell you, that stuff is the bomb. This stuff works amazing on all coats, from a pug to a poodle to a golden retriever. You can use it on all coats. You don't need all these different designer things. Now I'm going to put a disclaimer. I do not show clip. I do not do any show um, grooms. I do not do that. I do quick, comfortable, less stress. And that's what I focus on for my dogs. So everything that was done in this van, you know, I could groom a dog from start to finish in 45 to 55 minutes. The bigger golden's hour and a half, um, but I slowly phase those out. And I did most of that getting rid of products. When I was using the spray-ons, I'll get into that, but I want to give you guys a warning about that ahead of time. I'm going to talk about that. Um, so my solution was getting rid of all these products, right? And then for the future, like I saw this amazing thing coming together and these dogs that I was grooming, I saw their health getting dramatically better. I was seeing their coats get dramatically better and people, I would ask them, I'm like, what are you doing different? And they said nothing. And I'm like, I know what it is. So, you know, their hair follicles may be cleaning out because I wasn't putting all that stuff in. You can ask your own hairdresser if you're using like Pantene and stuff like that, they can actually scrape your hair with scissors and have all this excess crud come off your hair. That happens with the dogs too. And all you groomers out there, I'm trying not to have this white reflection on my face. All you groomers out there know when you touch a golden retriever, your hands are like covered in nastiness. That's not always your shampoo, but your shampoo may be leaving a little bit behind and it attracts more and more dirt. I find when you don't have that, it doesn't do that. So when you know better, you do better, right? So 
um, how do I go on with this? So I knew what I needed to do in my grooming shop. I needed to get lit rid of all these products that were just, I mean, that basket right there and the other basket on the other side were loaded with products. I thought I needed all these quick dries and leave on conditioners and all this stuff. You know, I, I found I did not need that. Once I stopped using them, I figured out how easy life got to be when you didn't have all those products. You got to groom quicker. Um, so I made my own shampoo. I made my own ear cleaner. And ear cleaner was kind of one of those things. Like, I, if you guys know anything about dog grooming, any of you guys out there on the East Coast, I think it's in April and September, there's big trade shows. Uh, the last one I went to was the last one for a reason. Um, it took me the whole time I was there, three or four hours, to find an ear cleaner that I was okay with. Wasn't good, but it wasn't as bad as most of the other ones. Most of the people don't even have ingredients on their labels, and um, when you do read them, you're a little terrified. Sodium lowell sulfates are loaded in grooming products. You do not want to be putting your hands in those things all the time. Um, one other thing I want to show you, because I don't really have labels in my house anymore because I don't use any of that stuff. But here's here's something I want to talk about as far as how to read labels, right? This is huge. Enviro Groom, and I'm not picking on anybody. This is all I had. It's natural green ear cleaner. People see this and like, oh, that sounds really good. They grab it off the shelf. It's probably on sale. So why do they grab it? Natural green ear cleaner. It's green. It looks natural. It says it right on the front. The only thing natural about it is that it is green, okay? When I look at the back, it contains aloe awesome. Tea tree oil, if it's the right kind, awesome. Corn derived ethanol. Corn, high allergen. Do we really need that? No. Witch hazel, awesome. Eucalyptus, awesome if it's the right kind. D-limonene. Um, silic acid and vitamin E. Okay, okay. Um, D-limonene. I don't know about you guys, but if you do any chemistry or look up anything, I see some, some of my uh, friends on here that if you look up D-limonene, and this is right on the label, you can't just go out into nature, as the label wants you to think, that it's natural. You can't just go out and buy D-limonene, okay? It is derived as a part of a whole. So D-limonene is a chemical constituent of an essential oil or of a plant, and it has to be extracted. So once you extract something that no longer becomes really natural, but the word natural is so messed up these days. So you're taking a part of the whole and taking it out. So it has become man-made, synthetic, adultered, all that. And you don't really want that to happen. You don't want all those fake things. So when people talk about essential oils around pets and getting a bad name, it's products like this that use individual parts or low quality tea tree oil or low quality eucalyptus oil. Those are really bad, okay? So for me, when I discovered Young Living, I knew I found something special because I had never, ever experienced what I experienced with Young Living. The quality, the purity, you can try to just, you can smell it, right? And if people don't want to believe it, that's their problem. You know, I always say, you know, I'm not going to say what I say, but you know, if people don't want to believe it, they don't have to. You know, there's, there's garbage in the world for people and there's high quality for some people. I prefer the high quality. These are my pets. These are my babies. If they want the, the cheap knockoffs, by all means, go ahead, you know, like, there's room for everybody, and I choose not to do that. So, um, I, like I said, I start seeing coats improve, he ears improving, um, people saying their dogs aren't itching as much, you know, was it what I was doing with my essential oil products, or was it what I was getting rid of? I don't know, but either the same, I was, I've been chemical free in my van, uh, I still groom, I probably groom once or twice a month with you know, six to eight dogs. I don't really groom a lot anymore, and that's by choice. I don't want to do it anymore. I retired at the height of really, really busy with my uh, with my grooming, and I had to let um, a lot of people go, and it wasn't it wasn't fun, and nobody was happy about it. Um, the other thing I want to really talk about is groomers, guys. If you're a groomer, please listen to me. I'm saying this because I honestly care. We abuse the crap out of ourselves. We will, like, in my grooming salon here, like, my table, it only has really one side, and that's the side I'm sitting on. Um, the other three sides are fairly close. I can stand in front, um, but I can't stand on the back side, and I can't stand on this side. The tub's right there. So when you're grooming a dog, you're pretty much contorting your body in every single way possible for the dog's comfort. And I don't think people who bring their dogs to the groomer really, really, really realize 
how much the groomer puts, a, um, if you see groomers walking around, they're usually hurting. They're hurting units. Their arms, their elbows, their wrists, their backs, their lower spines, their knees, their ankles are pretty much shot. We're picking up, um, I see Kathy's on, picking up big old greyhounds and putting them in the tub and they're like kicking and flailing at us, but we're going to do it because we want to make sure they're taken care of special. Um, and I love those two greyhounds to pieces. Um, but you know, in the end, your body does suffer. So I found when I got Young Living into my world, it did awesome for my neck, it did awesome for my spine, a chiropractor helps too, um, and it did so many good things for my muscles and my bones, how can I not use it on myself? Um, and then I started to wonder, well, maybe it'll do something for the dogs, you know, I mean, I did get these essential oils for my pets specifically, and I didn't really think I needed them until I started using them. And when I started using them, I realized, holy cow, they actually do work. Um, every single day, they surprise me. So, you know, having, having access to high quality products that really, really helped not only myself, but the dogs that were in my in my presence, you know, I, as you can see, there's not a lot of room here. Um, the biggest shelf is about that wide. So you can't really put a diffuser in here. So I have these little diffusers, battery's dead right now, but you would put the oil and water in here and you just open it and it would be like a personal diffuser. So you can clear the air with it. Um, you can put it on the table, you can put it on the shelf and the dogs settle down really easy. When you remove chemicals from the, from the environment, the dog's senses aren't messed with as much. And being in such a small space, you know, using synthetic smells like apples and blueberry and all that kind of stuff, which are more than likely synthetic, if you see the word fragrance or something on any of your products, you do not want to be using them. Um, those plugins, the candles, all that stuff that you guys think is making your shop smell really good, it's really disgusting. I'm sorry if any of you are doing that, but get a diffuser in there and use Young Living Essential Oils because I have been to grooming conferences. That last one I went to, another reason why I'll never go back is there's people there big places having really big diffusers and perfume oils to put into those things and what is that doing it's going right into your brain the dog's brains down into your lungs it's doing that to you and the pets so they know they're doing it they know they're not real they know they're not natural and oddly enough if you look up what the word natural means you'll be shocked because when it comes to essential oils, natural, there's no definition of quality in essential oils. I don't care if somebody says they're therapeutic grade, they're natural, they're organic, doesn't mean jack anything, okay? It's just terms. And there's companies out there that trademark their terms, okay guys? Look for that, because it doesn't mean anything. You have to really investigate the company. And I got into Young Living, and then I started researching other companies. I was like, oh, this is kind of expensive if I'm using it only on the dogs. Do I really need to use this good of stuff? Yes. I invested in some other quality products that I thought were quality and I started realizing like this stuff is garbage it's not doing anything it's back to irritating my throat again it's just not cool so what kind of stuff do I put in these diffusers um, stress away hello that's awesome smells like vanilla and lime and lime and lavender all rolled together who couldn't use less stress in a grooming shop if you guys have ever walked into a grooming shop dogs are barking dogs are peeing dogs are pooping Dogs are barking in the back. Hopefully there's no cats in there with the dogs because then you get the cats and the dogs, you get little dogs, big dogs, everybody barks, one dog barks, they all start and you're good for the whole day. So I'm talking really fast because, <laughs> because I get so passionate about this. I don't think people realize what groomers do. They think we pay with puppies and kittens all day long and that is not what we're doing. We're trying to give a two year old toddler okay with a full head of hair that goes all the way from the tip of his nose to the tip of his tail and we have to clean that trim that squeeze that cut that we have to do that in an hour and people complain when we charge sixty dollars get out of here get out of town you pay thirty seventy five dollars whatever it is to cut your own hair this is all i got this cost me forty five dollars to cut my hair i'm okay with that but when I have to do an entire dog and people think, I don't pay that much for my dog, for my own hair, well, guess what? Your hairdresser isn't doing your nails or your butt, right? Just had to say that. <laughs> so, um, purification is also really good in the diffuser, helps neutralize all the smells. Um, it's also really good to put stress away on your own wrists. Drop it right here. 
rub it together and when you're grooming the dog right your hands are usually really close to your their face so you don't want to be putting hot oils like peppermint or wintergreen or stuff like that or any oils right on your hands then holding the dog's muzzle right He's not mad at I brushed him exactly and he brushed him right before he came with the three inch thick mats hanging off the air um, So you're holding a dog um, Muzzle, you know to steady them so you can brush under you know, we do have to hold and steady um, Steady and firm is how I was taught in dog grooming. We're not hurting them But we are also making sure that they are not gonna bite us. Oh, do you bite your hairdresser? No, probably not. Um, that's another part of this job that I didn't even get into. Um, our clients can bite us. My own cat can bite me. Okay, yeah, it happens. Um, so using products that reduce stress and keep a calm demeanor about the dogs and for me, right? Um, I thought my dogs that I groomed had it awesome because I, I drove my own vehicle to their house and they came out to me and we walked in, we did it, we went right back in the house. There was no cage time. There was no waiting for mom while the other dogs barked. It was awesome. It was great, but they still stress, right? So stress away. I keep a bottle right here. This is my dog grooming bottle right there on the shelf all the time. Um, I got sidetracked there. So we're going to talk about stress away in the diffuser, but it's great as a perfume for me all the time. Um, purification is awesome to neutralize smells in the air. I'm going to give you a groomer hack. Let's see if I can reach for this. That's the other thing. You can kind of reach everything in here. So if you're a groomer, you know these top performance bottles. Um, I heard, oops, sorry. <laughs> Hit the power button on the table. <laughs> Yeah, the table goes up and down. That was awesome investment. So this bottle here, so this holds up to 32 ounces. So what I do, okay guys, listen up, this is huge. If you're a groomer, what is one of the worst things besides matted, disgusting dogs that come in? Um, smoker's dogs, right? So when you blow dry a dog, when you're a groomer, and even after you wash the dog, clean it up really, really good, when you blow dry it, it's horrendous, horrendous. It smells so bad and you're vaporizing that. So you're pretty much smoking and the dog smoking while you're cleaning the dog. You know the people inside don't care if the dog smells like smoke because they can't smell it anyways. Um, their whole entire house smells like that. But I had a trick. So I don't know if I have it. I think I do, but good luck finding it. Um, purification. Let's just make pretend one of these is purification. I'm going to show you all these little things later, but I don't know where it is. Let's just say, here it is. Here's purification. So this blend is a groomer's must. So I fill this up with about 30 ounces of water. I put two to three drops in there and then I shake it up really, really good. First, I wash the dog in our Young Living shampoo. Okay. Well, there goes the purification. So I wash them in the Animal Sense, Sense shampoo. You do not need a lot. I groom with the recirculating pump, and it's just um, like a sump pump, and it recirculates. So literally for a pug, I'm going to use about a teaspoon, a golden about a tablespoon. That's all you need. Um, and this is like, I don't know, like 18 bucks or something like that. So efficient, lasts forever. I don't pre-dilute it. I put the water in my tub or this. I don't really love using soap like this, but I put it in the tub and do the recirculating pump. So after you soap up the dog, the dog's clean, then you put your two to three drops in here. I don't care what size dog it is. Do another batch if you need to. Two to three drops per 30 ounces. And then you squeeze that over the dog and then you massage it in. Let it sit two, three minutes. I'm not big on just sitting there waiting for things to happen. I got things to do. And then I rinse the dog. Um, then put the dog on the table, towel dry it, put the dog on the table and blow dry it. You, I had a dog that smelled so bad, it stunk, like she stunk so bad, she was yellow. Um, she was white, she was supposed to be white, um, but she was always yellow. So when I did this, when I discovered this, it works for um, skunking too, you just have to use more. Um, but, uh, and add some extra stuff. Skunking is one of those things that's really, really hard. So purification in this for the smoker's dogs works so, so, so good. Okay. So that's purification. And the other thing I like to do, I like to use purification as like a perfume. So you can, it's not there. So you can get like a glass bottle 
I think mine broke. I have glass, yes, glass. I keep glass in here. Not many, but one thing. So I put my essential oils in a glass bottle, two to three drops in a four ounce bottle with water, and that's what I use as a perfume kind of thing. I don't buy perfume. It's wholly toxic and so bad for you. So I will spritz a dog with that. I love doing it on Goldens because you can spritz it and go over their tail when they go in their wagon. And oh my God, everybody loves the smell of that. So you can do like purification, peace and calming, stuff like that. Really gentle, um, uplifting smells. Even joy is a really good one. Um, so like I said, less is more. Start low and go slow. These dogs are not used to being around essential oils. And um, all I have to say is, they are used to being around essential oils, but the quality is bad essential oils. And those are the perfume oils, and those are the ones that give essential oils the bad name. So you need to know what you're working with. I do not buy any products that have essential oils in it. I buy the ones that have nothing in it and add my own because I want the quality and purity from Young Living and Young Living only. If you choose another company, that's totally fine with me. It is not my hands, not my lungs, not my brain. It's yours. So Gentle Baby would be really nice too. Um, it's just not one I never really use, but it would be really nice in a grooming salon. Um, so products like this give the front of the label a really bad name. You need to read the backs, okay? Remember, read the back of your label, and if there's nothing there, do some homework. Don't just buy it, okay? So the most toxic thing I have in my van is this. Quick stop. <laughs> hey, Stacy. Um, quick stop. If you cut a nail too short, what are you going to do? I guess you can use oils, but this is tried and true. I This is the worst thing I have in my van. You can come and pick my van apart and try to find anything else. Um, all right, like I said, clients noticed. They, they realized their dog smelled awesome. They noticed that the dog's hair was changing. They noticed, you know, like I said, I'm not the most perfect dog groomer on the planet, but at the same time, they wanted about convenience. They wanted about that your dog looked good, smelled good, didn't smell like cranberry applesauce or Rudy Tootie fresh and fruity, um, stuff like that. Yeah, I've used Hilichrism for a bleeding nail when they when they won't stop, but um, you know, I've used Valor, I've used Frankincense too on other things that won't stop, but you know, those are something we're gonna talk about later. We're gonna keep this as 100% compliant. All right, what else are we gonna talk about? Um, they, my clients also noticed I didn't miss a day of work. I can tell you in 2002, I always have to look at the date when I started, to 2014 when I stopped, I missed one day. One day, and it was besides the days that were weather, okay? Weather doesn't count at all. Weather does not count. We're in New York, and I have this huge van, and sometimes it doesn't stop. It's not safe for me to always be out on the road. So um, I missed one day for sickness, and um, it was bad. And I worked the day before through it, and it was horrible. And this was before oils. But um, using essential oils and boosting my immune system did a huge thing. I would notice there'd be days that I'd be driving if I felt a little bit of something coming on from the seasons change. I'd be downing thieves. I'd be putting thieves on my feet, putting valor on my back. I use Deep Relief Valor, all those oils to really help my body so that I can go out there and show up on time, if not early, to every appointment. There's groomers out there that are never on time when they're mobile. There are people that don't show up for appointments and don't call till weeks later. There's a lot of irresponsible mobile groomers out there. There's a lot of irresponsible people in every single every single business, right? That was not how I was going to be. I was on time, if not early. The dogs were well taken care of, and there was no stress, okay? They noticed I was there on time. Most of the time, people would leave me blank checks, fill out my own pay, right? They knew. They trusted me. Um, the other thing I want to talk about is makeup. Ladies, if you're a groomer and you're wearing makeup and a dog kisses you, happens. They're licking the makeup off your face and ingesting it. So unknowingly, you are putting on products that are loaded with talc, bismuth, and all those kind of things. Um, and a dog licks it and they're ingesting it and that could be poisoning to them, poison to them. Um, as, well, as well as your cleaning products. If you're cleaning, um, Dr. Jeff is on here and I'm going to use your term and I've heard it once and I always use it now. Our dogs are naked and barefoot, right? So they walk everywhere naked and barefoot. So if I'm 
mopping the floor with bleach or pine saw or something like that and it's not totally removed from the floor because most of those things say to clean the floor with the product and water and then go over it again with just water and get it off the ground. So if they're naked and barefoot and walking on that and licking it, ingesting it, again, you're poisoning them. Um, whether you want to uh, believe that or not, you are. Because if you look at the back of these bottles, like take Lysol. I brought this out just as a demo. It kills 99.9% .9 of viruses and bacteria. This is holy awesome. This is citrus meadow sh scent. So has um, right in the back, it says precautionary or... Yeah, precautionary statement, hazardous to humans and domestic animals. These are in doctor's offices, veterinary offices, everywhere. People spray it because they think they're going, doing good. What are you doing? You're messing with your brain. You're messing with your lungs. You're doing it to the dogs. You're doing it to yourself. You might as well spray it right straight down their face. Don't use this crap. You have alternatives, okay? This is about essential oils. Oh, boy, here we go. I'm going to start coughing because I'm getting so annoyed with that. Seeing this in people's places drives me nuts. Groomers, you know, open cup. Don't ever do that. I feel like I'm breaking the rules sitting in here with an open cup and there's not a layer of dog hair on it. Yeah, not in your office, Drew, I know. Um, so stuff like that, you, you got to be careful, you know, and if you're buying extra sprays and stuff for bathrooms or to cover all these other smells up, be careful what's in there. You don't know what you're doing to yourself. And now that you're watching this, you do know what you're doing, so make better choices. Um, what else are we going to talk about? <clears throat> it got to the point where I was teaching my clients because they were asking me what, what I was doing. And I would tell them what I'm doing. But at the same time, it was something that they needed to do for themselves and they needed to do in their own home. Um, and they would start asking about the products. And slowly, a lot of people were helping me help their pets by getting their essential oils, their kits, their starter kits, their oils, their diffusers, and bringing them into their home. And those dogs, oh my God, those dogs were thriving. Um, we want to talk about an ear cleaner. So you can see my thieves bottle back there. It's hard to point with that. So that's my thieves bottle. There's probably a cap full of thieves cleaner in there. This is our thieves cleaner. Um, Plant-based, no harm can be done with that. I can drink it, it tastes gross, but no, no harm will be done. Um, so a cap full of that in that bottle, and I put a spray top on it. I use that to clean everything. The walls, the windows, the floors. Dogs pee on my floor. If you're a groomer, if you go a day without a pee, it's a miracle. When the dogs poop, you gotta let them just poop, right? Wrap it up in the towel and throw it away clean up. You can even spray their little hineys with it. You can spray their feet if they step in it. Guys, I'm being serious here. This is what happens. If you don't know a groomer, this is what happens. They pee, they poop on the table. Um, so you can actually spray a towel. You can wipe them down with the thieves cleaner. Um, you can give them if they, um, if they have like, uh, their ears need cleaning, right? Cause I showed you the ear cleaner that I won't use. I just get a cotton ball and spray my th diluted thieves cleaner on there. And that's what I wipe the inside of the ear. These cotton balls are too big, so I break them into like three pieces. And I do the inside of their ear. Um, hopefully I'll remember in the next video to tell you something else I do for their ears. <clears throat> so, you know, people ask me all the time, what do you do for flea control? Oh, don't get me started there. You definitely don't want to be using those top spots, right? Because those are, what? What are those? Neurotoxins? Yep. And you're putting it on your dog, willing you, willingly, and spending a lot of money on it there's alternatives. Think about it. Um, what else can we talk about? Um, so basically social media is out there telling you don't use essential oils on your pets. I'm going to tell you me and Dr. Albright, who is a vet, we started a group called essential oils in a pet home beyond there. We have videos. You need to watch them, not ask us all the questions without watching the videos. Essential oils in a pet home are completely safe when you're using Young Living. If you're using another product, I cannot vouch for that. You are on your own. If you take the recommendations that we give you and use another product, I don't know what's going to happen. I know what will happen with Young Living. Um, so I have been using Young Living for seven years, got all kinds of training, and I believe I have found the most perfect thing on the planet to use on and around my pets. Um, pet professionals should not be afraid of this, but I understand that many are because they are not trained in it. There are training opportunities out there. You just have to take advantage of it for yourself. 
and check it out. Check in with me. We can help you. We're here. Like Dr. Albright said in one of our videos, she doesn't get all her training from medical professionals. She gets it from other like people like me. I'll train any vet. If any vet wants to know anything about essential oils, join my team. You know what? I'm going to be there to help you. Groomer, same thing. I'm here to help you 100%. Join my team. If you are not on my team, go to our essential oils in a pet home. Learn about it. It's not hard. I learned on my own. I didn't have a mentor. Um, I sought out Dr. Susan for a consultation and that was awesome. It was one of the best things I ever did. Um, what else? Um, I also noticed in my grooming salon, I hardly ever got my blades sharpened anymore. Why? Because I wasn't cutting the crap that's on the hair that makes them dull. I had so many ways to save money. When people tell me essential oils are expensive, I tell them, no, your health is not expensive. Disease is expensive. Figure it out. Walk with me. I'll show you that this is not expensive. I save money on shampoos. I save money on cleaners. I save money on ear cleaners, on scissors. I have a pair of scissors that I've been using for four years, five years, that has never been sharpened and is still super, super sharp. Why? Because I don't have crud, shampoo, uh, leave-on conditioners, quick dry, all that stuff is not on my dogs. That is crud that you're clipping and that's why your blades dull, along with a million other things. Um, what else? Um, so when the clients wanted what Young Living had, that was extra income for me also. I would be telling people about these products whether I got paid to do it or not, okay? I'm not being paid to sit here and talk to you guys. If there's anybody who hasn't used the products and wants to join my team, yes, they'll get paid on that, but you know what? The amount of education I'm gonna be giving you is far beyond that. Everybody else that's here that's already using Young Living, this is free, this is me. This is giving back to the community because people need what we have and you need to understand that. So backs, necks, think of that. Dogs have backs and necks too, right? Applying proper oils, the proper parts of the dogs is very appropriate to do when you're using Young Living. There's oils like Copaiba and Cool Azul is a favorite one of mine. We even have Cool Azul Pain Cream. I can say that for my lower back. It is amazing for pain. It's amazing for arthritis, okay? Groomers, as you're getting up there in age, things don't move. One of the reasons I actually really forced myself out of grooming was I could not raise my arm above this level. No matter how much oils I use, wasn't happening. Repetitive motion destroys the hell out of your body. My, my shelf where all my clippers are is up here. So I actually went like this and I had to go like this to get my clippers. That's not cool. I can actually move my arm. I mean, like I said, I still have a chiropractor, but I use my products and I, um, I've cut back on what I do. Young Living has completely replaced my income from dog grooming and I was uh, seven to eight dogs a day, five days a week. I did not work Saturday and Sunday. Being mobile, I did charge a lot more than most people in my area. So at this time, we're going to wrap this video up and we're going to have two more videos because I have the next one is going to be all about products and the one after that is going to be all about questions. So if you have questions, we're going to answer them. Um, so. If you want to know more about Young Living Essential Oils, how to use them in a pet professional way, um, and you don't have an account, reach out, let me know. I will help you get started so you can get wholesale, hello, saving money again. Um, if you do have an account, reach out to the person who got you started and ask them questions, but also feel free to jump over to Essential Oils in a Pet Home because we answer a lot of questions there if you watch the videos. It's so important to watch the videos. Um, Boarding facilities would greatly benefit from just diffusing Young Living Essential Oils. I have a video in YouTube and it's just peace and calming being diffused. The dogs were over the top insane when we set up the diffuser to the point you couldn't even hear me talking. And this was when I first got started. And then by the time we were done, there was one little dog barking. And these were, these were dogs, this was a shelter. Um, so the stuff works if you use the right stuff. <clears throat> if you use the wrong stuff, no idea what's going to happen, but no, we're here to help you. So my challenge to you at this point is to go into your home, open up a couple cabinets, open up um, a couple shampoos. If you're a groomer, look at your cleaners, your shampoos, your ear cleaners, and really evaluate. Is this something that you want to be spending the next 10 years in your environment? Do you really want to be putting your hands in this stuff? We have to touch enough gross things. We don't want to be exposing yourself to anything more. So my challenge, <coughs> open up some cabinets, cabinets, 
and see what's, I'm gonna grab a pop drop, and see what's in some of your products. I didn't stop talking for however long I've been talking. Trauma life in the diffuser. Yeah, I'm going to say I don't want that used in a dog grooming salon because that is going to help release traumas. And the last thing you want to do is release traumas while you're trying to groom the dog. <clears throat> and then if you're putting the dog in a kennel or putting it back in the house by itself, it's not a cool thing to be doing um, in a situation like that. So I need everybody leaves cough drops. I'm lost in every home. <coughs> read your products. Read the back of the labels. See what's in there. You need to do this for your health, for you, and your pets. 